My sister suddenly couldn't see after a car crash. Before that, she was very active, but now she hardly goes out. One day, I decided to take her shopping for a change. Unfortunately, we bumped into a co-worker who was well-educated but rude. He said mean things about us both because my sister is blind. He always treated me poorly, but I never expected him to target my sister too. My sister is kind-hearted and probably worried about me at work. Once we were alone, she surprised me by saying, He's history now. My name is Mike. I'm an ordinary office worker, 30 years old. While my friends are getting married, I hope for a good relationship. Right now, I'm shopping with my blind sister, Sarah. She's been beautiful and kind since we were kids, and she's my pride and joy. Our parents died in a car crash 12 years ago when I was in high school and Sarah was in middle school. It was their wedding anniversary and we were going out to eat when a drunk driver hit us. Dad was driving and a pickup truck crashed into us, changing our lives forever. After that, it was just Sarah and me. The accident hurt Sarah badly, making her blind. School became tough for her and she started skipping because she worried about what others thought. Somehow, her teachers and I managed to help her finish school. She looked so guilty, but she's always been the best sister. The teacher and I tried to make things easier for Sarah so she wouldn't feel too overwhelmed. Looking back, I realized we were lucky to have such a great teacher. Thanks to Sarah's determination, she got into a high school that provided excellent support for her needs. I know she goes through a lot, and she must have her own struggles. After the accident, when we both felt down, I was anxious about the future and didn't know what to do. But as Sarah started feeling better, I promised myself to protect her and started working part-time while in high school. Sarah, not wanting to worry me, tried to manage everything herself at home. She's become much stronger compared to when she used to cry a lot. Today is her birthday, and she finally got to go shopping, something she's been wanting to do for a long time. By the way, is it okay that you took the day off today? It's fine. I cleared my schedule a month ago for my sister's birthday. Really? Thanks. I didn't want Sarah to feel responsible for me, so I never talked about my work struggles at home. However, Sarah is sensitive and perceptive about people's feelings. She noticed I've been stressed from work. Hey, big brother, don't push yourself too hard. You look tired. Let's forget everything today and do whatever you like. Okay, got it. Today, I'm going to be totally selfish. I'll make all your wishes come true. Sarah often senses how I'm feeling and expresses concern for my health. Lately, work has been really stressful. I'm doing all of this to make Sarah happy, yet I end up worrying her. What am I doing? While thinking about this, I headed to the store Sarah wanted to visit. Usually I work in the human resources department at a certain company. I've been there since I graduated and feel grateful for the company. However, there's a troublesome person at work who is the source of my stress. Oh look, if it isn't Mike, the familiar face dragging us down. Don't you get that having someone with a degree from any college like yours in HR lowers our standards? Morning, Keith. Ha, huh. bet you're too dumb to even realize you're out of place. Keith is a colleague who boasts about his high education. We started at the same time and are the same age, but he often mocks me. Hey, Mike, you okay? Did Keith say something to you again? Morning, Nancy. I'm fine. You know, it's the usual stuff. Nancy is a female employee known for her beauty, inside and outside the company. She's two years older and has always been concerned about me because I often receive sarcastic comments from Keith. But I can't talk to Nancy casually. I feel the stares from others around us when we talk. She's popular not only in our department but throughout the company, having many fans. Being less educated, I'm seen as a mismatch to everyone. Keith also likes Nancy and often uses me as a pawn in his efforts to impress her, saying things like, Manager, since Mike was late, I took over and completed the editing of the template and the application for the recruitment grant. Oh, thanks, Keith. You're so reliable, unlike Mike. Hey, Mike, it's good to be thorough, but you need to think more about efficiency. No, but I was about an hour away from finishing the recruitment grant application when Keith took over. Wait a minute. Hey, stop making baseless accusations. It's disgraceful. The manager is giving you advice because he cares about you. Can't you just accept it? But this is how my achievements are always snatched away by Keith. Mike, Keith gets along well. I'm heading out. Mike, why don't you learn how to work from Keith? Anyway, good luck. There you have it, Mike. You should learn to work more efficiently like me.
Since then, the reputation that I can't do my job well has spread, not only in HR, but also to other departments. Because of these rumors, my standing within the company has steadily declined. No way, this isn't good. At this rate, not only a promotion, but even a raise is doubtful, and I've wanted to renovate the house for Sarah's sake. Huh? Mike, what are you doing here? Aunt Nancy, you know, right? My reputation is bad. Oh, don't worry about that. People who have worked with you know that you do your job carefully and diligently. It really boosts my confidence to hear you say that, Nancy. Really, if I can help in any way, just let me know. Thank you. I'll try to push a little harder. Yeah, I'm rooting for you. Despite these circumstances and to avoid worrying Sarah, I kept working hard. Then one day, when we were out shopping at the mall for Sarah's birthday, I ran into Nancy. Huh, isn't that Mike? Well, what a coincidence. Oh, Nancy, hello. Well, it's fresh to see you outside of work, Mike. Oh, who is this with you? Huh, oh, this is my sister. It's her birthday today, and we're out shopping. Really? Nice to meet you. I'm Nancy, Mike's colleague from work. Hello, I'm his sister, Sarah. He's always talking about how much you help him. Seeing that Sarah didn't make eye contact and noticing the cane she was holding, I decided to explain. Actually, Sarah is blind, Nancy. I'm sorry if we surprised you. Oh, no, not at all. I am surprised not at you, Sarah, but at you, Mike, because you never mentioned it at work. Huh, he said it's okay because when I'm feeling sick, people at work understand, and you can easily leave early. Really? That explains why you sometimes leave suddenly, saying it's for a doctor's appointment. Yeah, well, I say that because I don't want people to make a big deal out of it, Nancy. Mike, I wish you would have told me. Huh, no, it's nothing. But Sarah, it's your birthday today, right? Happy birthday. Ah, uh, thank you, Nancy. Are you also here to shop today? Yeah, I thought I'd see a movie and do some shopping. I was surprised to see you, Mike. Sorry for suddenly calling out. No, not at all. Knowing that you come to places like this makes me feel closer to you. What do you mean? I thought someone as unattainable as you wouldn't come here. What? I come here often. It's rare my brother is all mushy around a lady. What? I'm not mushy at all, really. Sarah, what's Mike usually like? Well, he's quite reserved at work, and it's hard to get a read on him. Oh, I see. He's always been a bit of a loner, kind of gloomy, or maybe introverted. Hey, that's mostly insults at the end. Ha <laughs> ha. You guys are close, huh? That was surprising to meet Nancy unexpectedly. Sarah and Nancy quickly hit it off and started to get along well as they chatted. Since Sarah hadn't made many friends since middle school, seeing her happily talking with Nancy reminded me of her brighter, more popular days. Unfortunately, we also ran into Keith. Isn't that Nancy and Mike too? Such an obvious look of displeasure. Hello, are you shopping too? Yes, but I'm lucky to meet you. But why with Mike? I just saw him and called out. It was the first time meeting his sister, Sarah, so we started talking and really hit it off. Huh, you have a sister? Yeah, nice to meet you. I'm his sister, Sarah. He's always talking about how much you help him. Oh, hello, really, your brother is always causing me trouble, but I had no idea he had such a cute sister. Keith then started staring intently at Sarah. Noticing her cane and where she wasn't looking, he realized she was blind and blurted out something unbelievable. Wait, your sister can't see. Yeah, so? Wow, no way. Seriously, first time I've seen that. Ha, it's weird, right? Sarah's polite smile and sad expression spoke volumes of the pain she had experienced before. I came with her to avoid this kind of experience. What's the point of me being here then? I was incredibly frustrated, but Keith's taunting continued. Weird, more like. I didn't think both siblings would be defective. What? Hey, what do you mean by that? Just what I said. You're dumb, and your sister's blind, right? Perfectly defective siblings, dude. Even if that's a joke, it's not funny. A joke? As if. Your parents must have some serious issues, too, considering they have kids like you. Leave their parents out of this. You guys are victims too, right? Pathetic. This is why careless parenting leads to bottom feeders being born into society. Keith was not only looking down on me and Sarah as defective, but also began mocking our parents. I couldn't take it anymore. Hey, that's enough. The way you look down on others just shows how poorly raised you are. Huh? What did you say, you bastard? 
I could endure your insults towards me, but I won't allow you to mock Sarah and our parents. Oh, uh, what's that? You want to go? Just as I was about to lose it and throw a punch, Sarah stopped me. Mike, stop. Your voice is loud, and people around us are looking. Can we stop this now? Huh? Ah? Uh, Sarah managed to calm me down, and somehow the situation cooled off. Keith was still mumbling something, but Nancy quickly dismissed him with a sharp knock it off, and he finally left. To regain my composure, I left Sarah with Nancy for a moment and went to the restroom to cool off my head. Then it was just Sarah and Nancy. That was intense. I've never seen Mike make such a face before. I'm sorry for dragging you into this, Nancy, and now I'm even taking up your time. Is the movie still okay? Oh no, don't worry about it. It's not your fault, Sarah. I was actually going to see a movie I've already watched, so it's totally fine. Is that so? But Mike is really family-oriented, isn't he? He takes on too much. I've noticed it even more lately. Ever since our parents passed away, Mike hasn't smiled as much as he used to. Your parents passed away? Ah, uh, yes. We really haven't talked about it, have we? They died in a car accident when we were still students. I lost my sight in that accident. Mike was lucky to escape with only minor injuries. That's awful, but I knew something was off with Mike lately. I'm glad to know why. Because I think that person is the cause of Mike's stress. I sort of understand these things since I lost my sight. I've become extra sensitive to other things. I kind of knew Mike was down because of that stress from work. Is that so? But he tries not to worry me about it and doesn't talk much when I ask. He's always said he didn't need many friends, just a few understanding ones. He's probably not great at socializing. I kind of get it now. He must be on the verge of exploding, especially with that guy at work. True, but don't worry anymore. Now that I understand the situation, I'll support Mike at work. Really? If you're on his side, I might feel a lot more secure. Sorry for being so familiar though we just met today. What are you saying? Don't apologize. In fact, I'm glad to hear you say that. It feels like I've gained a little sister. I've always wanted to be an older sister. Hey, I can see why my brother is so smitten with you, Nancy. You're wonderful. Please look out for my brother. Leave it to me, and I think he's pretty much done for. Just as Sarah was about to ask what Nancy meant by that, I returned. In the end, Nancy ended up joining us for Sarah's birthday shopping, and the three of us spent the day together. Watching Sarah talk happily as if she had gained an older sister slowly softened my frazzled nerves. When was the last time I saw her this happy? I felt a bit guilty, wondering if I had been too caught up in my own life to keep Sarah smiling. Maybe getting out more often isn't such a bad idea. With that thought, we visited all the places Sarah wanted to go and then followed Nancy, who knew about stylish cafes, to a coffee shop just a short walk from the mall. Ah, what a fun day, Nancy. Thank you so much for today. Oh, it was nothing. It was much more fun than spending my day off alone. Thank you. I'm sorry you had to stick with us until the end. Don't worry about it at all. And Mike, if you have trouble at work, you need to speak up sooner. Because Sarah is here too and if you're hurting, it makes her sad as well. You need to deal with any stress from work before you bring it home. I'm always here to listen to your complaints, Mike. Nancy, I mean thank you. Oh, if only Nancy were my big sister. Hey, Sarah, what are you suddenly saying? Did you spit out your coffee, Mike? It didn't get on my clothes, did it? Ah, uh, sorry, but that's not the point. I wished, too, if only Sarah were my little sister. Now, see you, too. Hey so that tumultuous day off came to an end. Who would have thought I'd run into a colleague from work like that? I really felt the popularity of the shopping mall all over again. Later, I was summoned by my manager and had to go to the CEO's, chief operating officer, office, trembling with fear that Keith might have reported our last encounter to the manager, leading to my dismissal. I knocked on the door. May I come in? Come in. What's this about, if I may ask? Your hard work has been recognized by the CEO. We're here to discuss your promotion. What, me? I've heard a lot about you from Nancy and the manager. You've been recommended for your meticulous work and especially your analytical skills, which our company needs. Really? Thank you. I'd be happy to accept. Good for you, Mike. Thank you, and thank you for your support, manager. But I assumed you thought highly of Keith. Keith has been trying, but, well, it's complicated. Keep up the good work. 
The manager's words were suggestive, but I was thrilled with the unexpected promotion. When was the last time I felt like this? Subsequently, the marketing department at the company was significantly bolstered, and I began to thrive in my area of expertise. Keith couldn't accept my promotion and demeaned me. You must have used connections or something. That's dirty, using such underhanded methods. Really? Who's he to talk? That's my line. I bit back the words that were about to slip out and continued to ignore him, focusing on my work. Later, Keith was also called into the president's office. May I come in? Keith, come here. Yes, what is this about? Well, I know Mike got promoted, so I guess it's something similar for me, haha. <laughs> as soon as he said that, the CEO's expression darkened, and he fixed Keith with a sharp gaze. Um, you went to the shopping mall the other day, didn't you? Huh. Yes. Do you remember what you did there? What do you mean? Just did some shopping and then ran into Nancy and others. I see. Well, it seems that an incident at the shopping mall has been posted on social media. Are you familiar with these insults captured in this video? The CEO played a video containing derogatory remarks directed at Sarah, me, and my parents, which have become a hot topic on social media. This, it seems your identity was quickly identified through these remarks. And since your social media account also contained information about our company, it's affecting the company's credibility. That's absurd. Individuals with your mindset unfortunately can't be retained in the company. What? Even if you have an outstanding track record? Individuals who disrupt harmony and belittle others can't perform well. This is in line with the company's founding motto passed down through generations. So I'm fired. Well, yes, it's regrettable. This is ridiculous. The video quickly went viral and Keith's personal account was identified. Furthermore, several complaints were made to the company and clients even called to protest, citing the information found on his social media. However, Nancy cleverly used this situation in reverse. She uploaded a post on social media showing me fiercely defending Sarah, portraying me as a caring employee and thus improving the company's reputation. Thanks to Nancy's wit, we managed to avoid any contract cancellations and settled the complaints, minimizing the damage to the company. However, the CEO couldn't overlook this troublesome employee and decided, after hearing Nancy's and the manager's opinions, to take action regarding this personnel issue. After learning he was getting fired, Keith returned to the HR department pale-faced, packed his belongings without saying a word, and left. As he was leaving, he shot me a sharp glare, but I met his gaze head-on. Neither Sarah nor I did anything wrong. He brought this upon himself. From now on, I'll fight relentlessly against anyone who dares to make Sarah sad. This incident has strengthened my resolve even more. But if I had lashed out at that moment, perhaps Keith wouldn't have been the only one facing consequences. I'm really glad Sarah stopped me. It was a learning experience that reminded me to stay calm. Afterward, I started getting along better with my colleagues at work and began spending more time with them during lunch breaks and outings. Of course, Nancy was the most caring and often came over to our house because she wanted to see Sarah. The way people looked at me when I was talking to Nancy hasn't changed, but I've become more confident and don't feel as mismatched as before. After all, Nancy is just a normal girl. Seeing her at home talking to Sarah, I realized there was nothing special about her. She hates beans and loves dad jokes, which showed a childish side different from my initial impression. Hey, Mike, invite Nancy over again. Nancy's busy. Don't ask too much. But Nancy said she's looking forward to coming here. That's just polite talk, right? She wouldn't say she doesn't want to come. Plus, with you here, she probably wants to have fun, talking girl to girl. Really? Is that all? What if maybe Nancy really wants to see you? What are you suddenly saying? Did you spit out your coffee again? Seriously. That means if Nancy didn't like you, she wouldn't come over so often, just because I'm here. No way. Nancy, a beauty like her into me. Impossible. What about you, Mike? Don't you like Nancy? Eh? Well, of course. I think she's beautiful and great, and yeah, I would like to date her. Hey, he finally said it. Hey, Nancy, great news. Then suddenly, Nancy, who had been hiding, emerged with a blushing face. Really? You two are such a handful, grown-ups and still needing my help. Hey, what, Nancy? Why are you here? 
Sorry, I was planning to confess with Sarah's help, but I didn't expect it to turn out like this. And like that, with Sarah's support, Nancy and I started dating. Since we decided to be together, the three of us began doing more things together. We even renovated the house that I had always wanted to remodel, and Nancy moved in to live with us. Life seemed tough, dark, and harsh up until now, but in the last few days since that incident it feels like my life has changed dramatically again. I have more to protect now and must work even harder. Nancy and I got engaged recently, and we plan to have our wedding next year. From now on, I want us to face any difficulties together, not alone. We hope to share the happy times among the three of us and share the hardships, too. I hope to show Sarah a happy life, let her feel it, and inspire her to live brightly and find someone great for herself someday.